anorexia nervosa, probably one of the biggest issues is that it can be associated with mortality. And um, of the psychiatric illnesses, it has one of the highest rates of mortality. So it's of grave concern. And then there are high rates of morbidity. It can basically starvation can affect every system in the body. Uh, cardiac functioning is a big one that ends up being impacted. Osteoporosis, you know, um, are a couple of the major problems that can occur. Denise Wilfley, a professor of psychiatry at Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, is a leading eating disorders researcher. She's heading up a new study to compare the effectiveness of different treatment approaches for anorexia nervosa. I think the main thing is how important it is for early identification of the illness. You know, given that this is a disorder that's been recognized for over 100 years and the fact that we've been so limited with the identification of effective strategies by the time people are in adulthood, I think by, you know, we're very grateful for the support that we can intervene early and hopefully the outcomes that we're going to have, you know, we'll, we'll have patients from all over the country, so we'll be very generalizable um, in terms of the outcomes of this study that we think that'll be a very important study for the field. The study involves six sites in North America and with plans to enroll 240 patients and their families, it will be the largest anorexia treatment study ever. For the purposes of this study, because it is funded by the National Institute of Mental Health, we have very strict entry criteria, so individuals have to meet the diagnosis of anorexia nervosa and also they can't be so underweight that they cannot benefit from an outpatient psychotherapy. So given those two entry um, criteria, that's why we are actually recruiting from around the country. And given that the base rates are less than 1% of all young women struggle with anorexia nervosa. One group of study families will receive behavioral family therapy, which focuses on changing eating behavior. Another group will receive systems family therapy, which explores family issues that influence eating disorders. And half of the patients in each group also will get an antidepressant medication. The thing that is similar about the two different treatments is that they're both family treatments. and. What that means is that the adolescent actually can't even participate unless the parent or guardians are willing to participate along with them. Siblings uh, participate in treatment so that we find that it seems like that there's a better effect if you have a united family front and involvement. However, there are different strategies and so one of the family therapists focuses much more on the eating behavior and changing the eating environment of the family and the other focuses much more on changing the way that family members communicate and interact with one another. And you can imagine, obviously, that both strategies may be effective, but we're really studying in isolation whether one or the other would be more effective. And the other piece that we are adding to this study is not only are we looking at the impact of the family therapy on the illness, but we're also looking at whether medication, um, and in this particular study, fluoxetine, will have any added benefit in terms of helping the adolescent maintain their gains.